Hello fellow creatures and wild things, I am Cheyenne or Earth Yards. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the process of my really cool coyote mask. Now this is definitely one of my favorite pieces that I've done in a long time, so I'm very excited to show you guys how I made this piece and what the process was like. All right, let's get into it. For 3D assignment, the prompt was literally just cardboard sculpture. And usually when we get the assignment prompt, we're expected to have like a concept sketch in that same like two hour time frame. So I frantically started to draw animal heads because I knew that animals would probably be the easiest to sculpt with cardboard. And for my original concept, I originally wanted to create like a rabbit head. But as I was like cutting the cardboard and getting all the stuff together, I just didn't really connect with the idea. So for the next class, I scrapped the rabbit idea and began creating a new head. With this new head, I knew that I wanted it to be a coyote because recently I've been in a bit of a coyote fling and that's all I've really been drawing or thinking about. So I made the base, which was a rectangle with like triangles pointing inward at the top and bottom. And this ended up creating like a cradle for my face. Then once the base was all taped together, I began to decide how long I wanted the first snout to be, which was the front one. And it resulted in me looking up a bunch of different coyote references because I needed it to be believable that it was a coyote and not just some canine of some sort. As I was looking up references, I noticed how the snouts on coyotes were generally narrower towards the tip. So I attempted it to make it narrow near the nose which only worked for like the first snout because by the time I got to the other two, I was already tired of sculpting and just kind of gave up on making the perfect shape. So once I was done sculpting the face shape, I added a layer of paper mache and then three layers of gesso. And with this gesso, I was attempting to make like a plaster layer that I could sand down and make the paper mache look smooth which like worked for the most part, but there were still areas where you could tell it was paper mache, which I mean is fine, I guess, but it wasn't really what I was going for. The sanding took almost an entire class period, so like two hours to sand. And then the sculpting took like eight to nine hours, not including paper mache, which took like three hours. So already we've spent up to 14 hours total of working on this sculpture without even touching the paint, which is what this video is. Um, and at first I was like, do I really want to paint every first stroke? And then I remembered that's who I am. I, that's part of the process that I actually enjoy to do. So I did it. I spent three hours on Saturday, February 11th working on the fur and really only got a tiny bit around one of the eyes. But on February the 12th, I knew that it was the last day to work on it. So I had to crunch. I started off painting half of the front snout using like a basic brown paint, not really mixing it with anything since it was already similar shade to the photo that I was referencing. And it was like 11 in the morning, so I had woken up, eaten breakfast, and almost immediately started to sit down and paint. And I recorded the majority of it for the most part, but I worked on it for so long that I realized I'd have like five hours of footage to edit if I did try and record every detail. So as I was painting, I'd record a snippet, stop the video, paint some more, and then start another small video. And I do have to admit, recording the process of it probably did slow me down since I had to set up each time I wanted to record, but I think it was totally worth it to see the progress of this piece. Now I figured since I'm sharing the process of the piece, I'd share the meaning behind it as well. So. I've always found it difficult to talk to others and have like meaningful friendships or relationships with others. And I always notice myself changing personalities between different people as if I'm shielding my true self. Cause I know that if I lose someone, that specific personality or persona would be taken with them and not my actual self. So it's a form of protecting my inner being, I guess. Cause I always know that in the end, people leave with or without reason. And that's why I tend to distance myself in the first place. But along with distancing myself and keeping myself from developing deeper connections with others, putting on this persona or character just solidifies the fact that I shouldn't mourn lost relationships if they were never with the real me in the first place. 
So relating this to the sculpture, I decided to create a coyote or a canine of some sort because as a kid I would run around pretending to be a wolf or some wild creature. So it's like a somewhat reflection of my inner child and I wanted to relay the idea of splitting myself into different characters by creating more faces rather than just one. They all share the same brain, same mouth, same eyes, but they're all different, just slightly. There's one that looks directly at you, the true soul, but to the sides, there's two other coyote faces, the other personalities behind the soul, the ones that protect. Now, you can't really tell which is the original face, the one that the two faces morphed into, which solidifies the idea that I've gotten so used to putting on these characteristics and different traits to the point where I can't even differentiate which is the real self. I've gotten so used to hiding myself where I don't even know who I am anymore. Am I just a reflection of these personalities, or am I something more? Anyways, that was a bit deeper than I originally planned for it to be. The idea just kind of popped in my brain like, oh, a three-headed coyote would be pretty cool. But generally as I make artwork, I begin to connect to it, realizing that there's always something deeper behind each concept rather than just like a cool idea. So all in all, I spent 10 hours painting each individual detail, three hours on Saturday, seven hours on Sunday. It was definitely a process, but I think it was totally worth it. I even was able to glue in some material to the inside of the mask to give it more of a professional finish rather than just leaving the duct tape in there. And as I'm writing this, editing, Cheyenne, <laughs> hi, um, finished critique, critique went very well and the mask was perceived very well and a lot of people enjoyed seeing all the details put into the piece. And I'm struggling to record this audio because my throat is so dry, I keep having to pick up my water, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see you at the end of the video. Here it is, finished. Oh my god, my chair is so squeaky. I'm so happy with this piece. I haven't been this happy with a piece in a long time. I guess working outside my comfort zone really helps, like everyone tells me to do, and I sometimes ignore them, but yeah, I'm very happy with this piece. It looks very cool, very trippy, I guess, yeah. I have a bunch of photography over on my Instagram of this piece if you want to go check that out. I'm spent like two hours outside the other day um photographing me in this mask <clears throat> which i think is why my throat is so dry and i feel like i'm getting sick because it's cold out yeah so if you want to go check out the photography of this mask feel free to go check out my instagram or my facebook i have it over there as well too so yeah Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in seeing more from me, feel free to subscribe or check out my other social medias down in the description. I have my Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest linked as well. And feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it. Just have a good morning, good evening, and good night. I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.